everyone. Today I am doing Halloween makeup. This me is going to this and this. Let's get started. A toner, Naturium BHA liquid exfoliant to percent. It helps minimize the appearance of pores. Next, I'll moisturize with Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Cream. Prepping the skin properly makes a huge difference in how your makeup applies. Make sure to choose your skincare based on your skin concerns. Then, I'll apply Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. This product works as both a moisturizer and a primer, and it's suitable for all skin types. It's incredibly popular, and I've heard many of my clients love using it. Foundation. I'll be using Lady Gaga's House Labs Foundation. It's medium coverage, but you can build it up for more coverage or keep it light for a natural finish. It doesn't dry out the skin and feels more like a moisturizing cream than foundation. It's one of my current favorites. I'll blend it in using a sponge. Next, concealer. I'll use Hourglass Airbrush Concealer to add some highlight. Blend it with sponge. For contouring, I'll use Patrick Does Cream Contour to sharpen the face. Going for a bold, defined look today. Many Asian faces lack height between the brows and the nose bridge, so I'll add contour there to give the nose a more lifted appearance. I'll also add same contour color just above the tip of the nose to create an upturned look. Blend with the sponge. Next, I'll set the base with Laura Mercier's Ultra Blur Loose Powder. This one feels a bit heavy, so it might not be ideal for those with dry or aging skin. I'll also use Patrick Does Contour Powder over the areas where I applied the cream contour earlier. For eyeshadow, I'll use Max Contour Palette as a substitute. My vision for Kunli is to have no bold eyeshadow, just shadows that make the eyes look bigger and sharper. I'll apply it from the outer corner of the eyes, lifting the ends slightly to give a slanted look. A darker shade will go along the lash line on the outer corner. Then. I'll apply a cream-colored Laura Mercier stick shadow under my eyes, a shade slightly brighter than my skin tone. This shadow will also be applied to the waterline. I'll then add eyeshadow under my eyes, focusing on the outer half while leaving enough space for the cream shadow to peek through. This will make the whites of the eyes appear larger. Next, I'll create a small crease using an eyeshadow and eyebrow liner, which will give a youthful and cute look by shortening the middle of the face. I'll use gel liner to sharpen the inner corners of my eyes. Now, I'll use double eyelid tape called Mazaik, a fine fiber tape I bought in Japan. Stretch the tape and apply it to create your desired eyelid width. Next, it's time for false lashes. I'll be using anime style lashes today along with Japanese-made glue. Before applying, make sure to cut the lash to fit your eye length. Sometimes I leave them slightly longer for a more extended eye look, but today I want rounder eyes, so I'll cut them to my natural eye size. I'll also apply lower lashes, specifically V-shaped ones. I'll place five clusters from the middle to the outer corner of the lower lash line. Next is eyeliner, I'll use a liquid eyeliner to create a cat eye look. I'll draw a thin line from the inner corner of the eyes, gradually thickening it as I extend outward to form the cat eye shape. Then, I'll apply Tom Ford's highlighter to the inner corners of the eyes and along the tear duct area. For the brows, I'll use Anastasia's brow pen in dark brown. Since the brows can really shape the look, I want to give Kunli a strong appearance by drawing thicker, straight brows without much curve. However, to keep a bit of femininity, I won't apply too much color to the inner brow area. Instead, I'll soften the look by adding some brown shadow with a brush. Next, for blush, I'll apply a subtle baby pink shade. I'm using one from Patrick Ta. Now for the lips. First, I'll use Anastasia's brown lip liner to contour the lips, drawing an overlined shape with rounded edges. Then, I'll lightly erase the natural lip color using the same sponge I used for foundation and concealer. This helps the color of the lip product I'm using to stand out more. Next, with a small brush, I'll blend the lip liner. Since the lip liner is mainly for contouring, I don't want the lines to be too harsh, so blending helps soften them. I'll also contour under the nose to shorten the filtrum. I almost forgot. Time for highlight. I'll use Tom Ford's highlighter on the tip of the nose, 
down the bridge, and along the top of the cheekbones. Back to the lips, I'll apply a baby pink lip color by tapping it on with my finger. Then, I'll use a deeper pink, applying it just to the center of the lips in the same tapping motion. This gives a natural look without the appearance of heavy lipstick. To finish, I'll add a touch of gloss. And it's all done! This is before the makeup! And after! What a makeup transformation! Now, let's try the second look! First, let's cover up those eyebrows. Apply a generous amount of glue stick to flatten your brows against your skin. Make sure they're fully stuck down. Next, lightly dab some powder over the area to set everything in place. Now, using a black eyeliner pencil, outline the rough shape of your skull. This doesn't need to be perfect yet. It's just a guide for what's to come. Grab your face painting palette and start by applying a white base all over your face. Don't forget your neck for a seamless look. Keep the layer thin, but even, so it's comfortable to wear. With the black paint, trace over the outline you made earlier to make those lines really pop. Use the same black paint to fill in the mouth area, adding in those skeletal teeth details. For the eyes, paint around them with the black to create those deep, hollowed-out sockets. Once the main structure is done, it's all about fine-tuning. Use black and gray eyeshadows to add depth and shadows, giving your skull a more dramatic, three-dimensional look. Adding shadows with eyeshadow helps give more contrast and detail to the design. To achieve that aged, vintage look, avoid making the white too clean and pristine. Blend some shadows around different areas to give it that worn-in feel. And for the final touch, draw in some small cracks here and there to make the effect even more realistic. It's those little details that really bring the look to life.